Welcome back to the Hockey Show, and today we are talking about Sportsnet's list of 13 active players that they believe are already locked to be in the Hockey Hall of Fame. And I've got to say that this list has one, mainly one glaring issue that I believe that Sportsnet's, ESPN, TSN, freaking everyone in the hockey world, hockey YouTubers, or you at home, I have a big issue with. And it, it is just such an annoying thing that I just cannot get past of how hockey fans are just so stuck in their way. So, I don't know. But we're going to talk about it real quick. But first, I got to ask you, can you just subscribe, please? It would be so cool. It would make me smile like this. Don't you want to see that? Not this. Make me sad. But anyways, um, let's talk about the actual list and why you're here and not whatever the hell stupid thing I'm doing. So anyways, let's start off quickly with Crosby and Malkin, right? These two guys, the two-handed punch, like these, like, unreal. The powerhouse, right? The cups that they won, three cups, the hearts, the rocket Richards, con smites for both of them, Crosby's gold medal goal, like Gino being the most underrated player of all time. Like these two guys, the story that you can tell with them, just like the absolute like legendary status of what the Penguins were just because of these two guys. Unreal. Of course, it wasn't just those two guys. Fleury, of course, is on their list that they added, but they left out a name of Chris Letang. And with what they're going to do down here with the Tampa Bay Lightning, which is include, like, the four main members of why the Tampa Bay Lightning won the Stanley Cup, makes you think, where is Chris Letang, the defenseman that was their main guy on defense the years they won those cups, especially the back-to-back -back ones and all those years that they were possible Stanley Cup champions, right? I don't know. Kind of weird to, to me to ask, if you asked me, but... Is Chris Letang a, uh, a, a uh, Hockey Hall of Fame player? I don't know. It's kind of hard, especially with some other names that have yet to make it in. So I would say maybe he's a little bit lower on the list. But Letang being out is kind of what one of the trends of this list is. Because including Alexander Ovechkin. Because Ovechkin, right? Unlike how I would say like a Crosby or a McDavid or like a Connor Bedard are like generational talents they because they are like the most skilled player of their time the most like they have the speed they got the skating they can score they get the points they're clutch sure they have all these things going for them right but Ovechkin is a different breed of beast right he is not just generational he is just literally one of a kind like icon when it comes to goal scoring I don't care if he doesn't break the record or not he is the greatest goal scorer of all time if he lived in Gretzky's day he would have gotten 4,000 goals right but that's where the question comes in right his Ovechkin right did he do all of this alone with all those president's trophies and all of the absolute dominance in the 2010 just the 2000s in gen general like all of his dominance was that all on his own was it not without Nicholas Backstrom or John Carlson back there right like I don't know they leave out like they have like all of the Tampa Bay players they only have two of the well I guess they have Fleury on there too but it's just like and with the Kings they do like they go through each like of the dynasty teams that have been around for like the 2000s right and to me it's like like where are like the other filler players because clearly they didn't care about going like over 10 it's not like they were like top 10 it's just 13 like they could have gone past that to 15 and added a couple players but no is Nicholas Backstrom like not a legendary player for what he did with Ovechkin I would say so what about John Carlson on the power play with Ovechkin I would say so but I don't know, but that's not the main point of this video so first let's get past Patrick Kane Patrick Kane like once again generational he brought in a new wave of nhl i would say being like superstar like skilled player skilled offensive player is what like a patrick kane is he he is what the evolution of like the zegris is and the jack hughes like the superstar like skilled smaller but very speedy very offensively talented players right that is who patrick kane brought in is this new wave of the nhl he changed hockey and me, like, Hockey Hall of Fame with the Blackhawks, absolutely. But what about Keith, right? They said Taves is obviously a lock as well, but he's not technically active. But Duncan Keith? Well, I guess he's not active maybe either, technically, right? So, I don't know. But Duncan Keith, eh, I would say also should be in there. But here's the main point of this video that I wanted to get to. And what my issue is with Sportsnet to ESPN to everyone, Connor McDavid. Is he a lock for the NHL Hall, the NHL, the Hockey Hall of Fame? 
is Connor McDavid. Think about this really good. Because their defense of him is like, even though he doesn't have a cup yet, he has already proven himself at 27 years old. He's got the most points ever since he's joined the league in 2015. And he's got like all he's got the most assists, the most points, he's got the most like game-winning goals, and he's in some other number, right? And I'm like, okay, fair points. Um does that actually get you anywhere if you get the most points? If you can just get all of the points, does that mean anything really? Because I will say, will Connor McDavid be in the Hockey Hall of Fame? Sure. But here's my issue. Is already a lock. Already a lock means if like things just stop today, if the NHL went bankrupt and there is no more NHL hockey, then the Hockey Hall of Fame would still exist. I'm pretty sure it would still exist. So... Then, like, does McDavid get in by just already what he's done? I would say not. And in, they did not include on this list guys like Austin Matthews, who has been second in goals in that amount of time since 2015. The only guy to beat him in was Alexander Ovechkin. Austin Matthews is the goal scorer, right? If, if, if Connor McDavid is like the Crosby, then Matthews is the Ovechkin of this, like, new era of the NHL. So they're going to say that they're going to um, put McDavid over Matthews, right? Because both of them have had similar success. Sure, Connor McDavid's just recent playoff run was, un like, they get to the finals and almost win it by one win, but I would say that was definitely a fluke. They didn't deserve that. But anyways, like, actual, like, playoff and, like, President's Trophy success and stuff, like, both of them have hearts. I mean, sure, McDavid just racks them all up over and over again because the NHL doesn't actually care about who really is the best player, just kind of who gets the most points and then maybe just little attributes after that. But to me, it's like, Matthews, I would say so if you're going off of, like, this current crop of, like, the under 20-year-olds. Then you've got Nathan McKinnon, who has a cup and hearts. I think he has more than one. Maybe, no, he just has the one, right? But he's going to get at least one more in his career, especially after this crazy season he's had. The heart, I, uh, like, he... He is just as good as Connor McDavid, right? I would say he's third in points, only behind Leon Dreisaitl, who I'll get to. Like, he's done almost the exact same things as him, except he's gotten the President's Trophy. He's gotten the heart. He's gotten his team to the grandest trophy, right? Leading them on the way. Being in big situations, right? Unlike Connor McDavid. What about Kale McCarr? I would say the greatest defenseman in the NHL right now. Maybe the greatest to ever do it, ever as a defenseman. He will win three Norris. He's already got one Norris. I would say he wins at least three in his career. And then Leon Dreisaitl, who has a very similar career path as Connor McDavid. What about him? If McDavid gets in, according to Sportsnet, what about Leon Dreisaitl? And it's just this kind of thinking that the NA that hockey fans have this big issue with like actual like I don't know hockey fans are very stuck in their ways and like and me too but I really really hate how the NHL and hockey fans especially just believe like only like there's only a select few that actually are the greats because I was on Instagram the uh, just yesterday and I saved this one post because it made me so mad there's some page that I see all the time where they do like just a ton of rankings on there and one, they said, like, they decided over this soft season they were going to do, like, the 20 greatest players of all time. And the top 10 list are all players that no longer play and played, like, 30 years ago. Or 20 years ago, at least. To me, that is absolutely insane. I hate how any, how hockey fans, and most hockey fans, think that only, like, the mythological players of 30 years ago and beyond are the greatest players of all. That is the peak of hockey. Not the Malkins, Crosby, Ovechkins, Canes, McDavid, Stamkos, Vasilevsky. Like, you really think that Patrick Waugh or maybe Dominic Hasek. I don't really believe Patrick Waugh was the great. I would pick Hasek over Waugh. But, like, you really think that Andre Vasilevsky, if he was in, like, the Brodeur's days, would not be the most dominant goaltender in the world? I believe so. But not even goaltending, right? Goaltending has changed so much in the NHL over the years. But you don't think Connor McDavid or Patrick Kane or Crosby or Malkin or Ovechkin, hell, even, like, a Carlson... 
you don't think that if they were the NHL 50 years ago, 20 years ago, or no, okay, maybe 20 years ago, since they, I think they were in the NHL 20 years ago, most of them, but let's say 30 years ago in the 90s, you don't think that, or in the 80s with, with Gretzky, you don't think that Ovechkin would dominate the ice? No way. He absolutely would. All of them. The hockey fans have such a stuck ignorance of only holding on to like who the marketing and who like the instagram and what people believe i don't know what it the, like the, every what it is about it but hockey fans are just so stuck with believing like oh yes because we know this person all the time like hockey fans are always talking about who's underrated and stuff but they always push the same narrative that guys like Connor mcdavid are just obviously the best in the world I believed that a little bit ago, but after, like, some really, like, hard thinking, I was like, you know what, no, he has done absolutely nothing. Sure, he can get a ton of points because he's just super fast or whatever, but the team has done nothing. He's achieved nothing, and look at what this, and sure, it comes down to your actual team and stuff, but to me, there is just such a stuck ignorance in hockey fans that stuff like Connor McDavid, oh, yeah, obviously, just because he's gotten, he's really good. It's like, okay, yeah, a lot of players are really good. You actually have to do something historical, right? And if he never wins a Stanley Cup, he might be the best guy to never win a Stanley Cup. But, I, I mean, I just don't care. Like, it just, I don't know. It, there's a lot of dumb things about it. Because then they go on and then they list Stamkos, Kucherov, Hedman, and Vasilevsky. All four of the main guys of the Tampa Bay Lightning. I would be, I'm absolutely okay with that. The Tampa Bay Lightning, I would have been so dominant and people just don't care about it over like the last like eight, nine years. Like they were, they started off as the, uh, they remember like they went to the con the cup finals in uh, 2015 against Patrick Kane when they won their third Stanley Cup, right? That was against Tampa Bay. And then at, years after that, they were going to the conference finals. They just couldn't break back into the finals, but they would go to the conference finals. Strong seasons, President's Trophy winning seasons, tying the record for pr the President's Trophy seasons, right? All these crazy, ridiculous years. And finally, they punched the ticket to go back to back to back Stanley Cup uh, finals, winning two of them. And it's just like this... Cr this insane like uh reign of dominance by the tampa bay lightning unreal and they all four are deserve it stan coast all the rockets and the dominance and being the captain of that tampa bay team kucherov the points guy headman the defenseman and then vasilevsky the great goaltender right you get that four that quattro <laughs> that quattro that like those four guys that really make up a stanley cup winning team like crosby malkin latang flory ovechkin backstrom carlson and then i would say holtby um, like Kane, Taze, Crawford, and Keith, like all these teams that win the Stanley Cup, like you have all four of those pieces, right? That's kind of why the Oilers have never won one because they have, sure, they have Leon, McDavid, and that's it. Like they don't have those guys to win the Stanley Cup. If they do, then they will. But like then you go down the LA Kings where there's a huge snub, right? Kopitar, absolutely. Drew Doughty, absolutely. But then, where's Jonathan Quick, the greatest goaltender from USA ever? Where the hell is he? He, like, how do they just not put Jonathan Quick on the list, but they're going to put Flurry and, like, even, like, I mean, uh, like, Vasilevsky, too. Like, Jonathan Quick, like, the actual accolades that he has done is unreal. Un-freaking real. And they're just going to leave him off the list? okay and that's just what is so weird to me is like why did they just decide not to put him on because like they decided to go to 13 like it's not like they was anything stopping them going like 16 like they weren't going like you know top 10 or top 20 like they didn't have like some sort of like a, like like generic like number for their list they went to 13 so they didn't care about going over 10 or like having a little bit longer of a list there wasn't even an honorable mentions they, uh, they just completely blatantly left them off. Then they add, like, Eric Carlson, which, yes, three Norris trophies, the 100-point season, unreal. He is a legendary uh, defenseman. No matter what people want to say about him, his defense or whatever, the last few years has not been very good. That doesn't matter. People who say that just literally do not care about, like, what the first half of his career was un absolutely real 
playing of hockey. So, Carlson, I think absolutely. Marc-Andre Fleury is the last one they put on this list, and I'd say, yeah, he was the, I mean, the, the wins that he's on the, the top five of, games played, just like the, the, he's been so good for so long, too, that his story, that going to the Vegas Golden Knights, and just like, from the Penguins, to the Knights, to the wins, to all this stuff, like, being part of the history, like, he is absolutely a Hall of Famer, right? But that's where they capped off the list at 13, right? So, instead of, like, and they decided to do McDavid over Matthews, McKinnon, Kale McCarr, or Leon Dreisaitl, but who else are they missing, right? They are missing Marchand. They are missing, I like, if you're going to do, like, a McDavid, you could, might as well go with, like, hell, you could say someone like David Pasternak. Or, if they're going to make the claim that McDavid, oh, because he is the most points over this amount of time, I could say, oh, well, you know, uh, Connor Medard had the most points over, like, 79% of all Hall of Famers. Or actually, like, 95% of Hockey Hall of Famers in his rookie year. So, for that, he's in the Hall of Fame. And it's like, what? No, that's not how it works. Um, like, he didn't act, there's nothing on his resume, you know? And it's just like, you're, where's Marshand, right? Where is Latang? Where is Nicholas Backstrom? Where is um, uh, Barkov, right? What about Barkov? What about Bobrovsky? Like, those guys have definitely done a lot. And then you could even say something like, uh, well, Carey Price isn't technically active anymore either. But, like, uh, I'm trying to think, just a random, like, random team. Let me just think uh, the uh, blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, the Wild, right? Who's on the Minnesota Wild? Like, a, like Zach Parise. What's wrong with Zach Parise? I don't know. <laughs> like, why doesn't he get... I mean, I guess he just technically retired, but, like, like he's technically done more than Connor McDavid has. I don't know. It's a weird debate, and Hockey Hall of Fame, like, type stuff like this is kind of really hard. Unless you're a guy like Crosby and Malkin and Ovechkin and Kane, like, it's, it's, it is such a hard debate. But to me... If you were to get get put, like, McDavid's, right, the under-20-year-olds, like, of the NHL, like, the current, like, superstars, like, McDavid, Matthews, McKinnon, Kale McCarr, Leon Dreisaitl, of, like, those main, like, guys that the NHL pushes and are, like, the top young guys in the NHL, well, young guys of the NHL, I would definitely put McKinnon and Matthews over McDavid because Matthews' goals, like, numbers are actually, like, similar to Will Vetchkin and just owning it. And, like, Kale McCarr is, like, I don't know. To me, it's just, it, it, to the Hockey Hall of Fame is you need to have, like, so many accolades. You need to be the man. And McDavid has not been the man. He couldn't do it. Sure, he gets a ton of assists or gets a ton of points or whatever. But McKinnon will do what it takes to win the Stanley Cup for his team. And that's just stuff like that. So, to me, I'm just kind of rambling. This is just a whatever video at this point, but I don't know. It's an interesting debate, but I want to have a longer discussion about this in the future of, like, who I would make, and I also think I might make a, a, a an O Hockey Show Hall of Fame. I think I would, I would like to do, like, a, every year we, uh, we in, inaugurate, inaugurate? That's, that would be the first of a thing. We would nominate, you idiot, um, we would nominate, like, uh, ten players and then it would be uh, something. So, I don't know. That would be something for the future. But anyways, I just thought this list is ridiculous. I've been not really liking a lot of the list that's been coming out from just media, and I just don't like it. So, that's all I got to really say about all this. I know this is kind of a whatever video, but it's just been a nice chat to have. So, that's all I got to say. Tell me what you think down below about this list, and uh, maybe I'll talk more about it another time if you get who you think should be in the Hockey Hall of Fame. But I'm going to make a longer video about this, and that's all I got to say. So thank you for watching this. If you made it this far, please, I'm begging you, please subscribe. And until next time, too sweet. I hope you have an amazing day, and ta-ta for now.